Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at covalent bonding and how we can represent covalent bonds. We'll finish off with a summary. Covalent bonding is one of the three types of bonding that you need to be aware of, alongside ionic bonding and metallic bonding. Let's introduce covalent bonding by looking at how it's different to ionic bonding. If you've watched our videos on ions, you'll know that ionic bonding occurs when one or more electrons is transferred from one atom to another. Specifically, one or more electrons is transferred from a metal to a non-metal. In this diagram, on the left-hand side, we have an atom of lithium with its three electrons shown, two in the inner shell and one in the outer shell. On the right-hand side, we have an atom of chlorine with its electrons also indicated. What we've drawn here is known as a dot and cross diagram, as the electrons on the lithium atom are indicated with crosses and the electrons on the chlorine atom are indicated with dots. If lithium and chlorine react together in order to form an ionic bond, what happens is that this outermost electron from the lithium atom is transferred over to the chlorine atom. And we can see the result of this if we look at our next picture. The lithium atom has lost its outermost electron and therefore will become a lithium ion. We indicate an ion using these square brackets. And as the lithium atom has lost one negatively charged electron, we know that this ion will have a positive charge overall. We can indicate this by drawing a plus sign in the top right hand corner of our picture. Similarly, our chlorine atom has also become an ion, this time by gaining this one electron from the lithium atom. You can easily see in the dot and cross diagram that this electron has been transferred. We should also therefore draw our chloride ion in square brackets and add a negative charge to the top right hand corner to indicate that one negatively charged electron has been gained. It's the electrostatic attraction between this positively charged metal cation and this negatively charged non-metal anion that forms a strong ionic bond. But what about a covalent bond? A covalent bond is different from an ionic bond because covalent bonding occurs when a pair of electrons is shared between two atoms. This sharing occurs instead of the electron transfer. Again, let's look at an example. This time we have two atoms of chlorine. And we can see that yet again both have seven electrons in their outer shell. Although this time we've drawn one with crosses and one with dots to help us see what happens to the electrons in the formation of a covalent bond. In the formation of an ionic bond, the metal atom lost one electron as this was the easiest way for it to gain a full outer shell. However, for these chlorine atoms, the simplest way to gain a full outer shell is to accept one electron. And therefore, when they bond with another chlorine atom, the easiest way for them to do this is to share one electron each, which we can see in our next diagram. Sharing has enabled both chlorine atoms to experience a full outer shell of electrons and it's this shared pair of electrons that is what is called a covalent bond. This covalent bond is held in place because the nuclei of the two atoms are attracted to the shared pair of electrons. This is because the nuclei have a positive charge and the shared pair of electrons a negative charge. This strong attraction makes covalent bonds very strong. We've seen that ionic bonds are likely to occur between a metal and a non-metal. However, covalent bonds will form between non-metals. If we look at the periodic table, we can remember that it's divided into metals and non-metals along this line, with the elements that are shown here in blue, the non-metals. Elements on the right-hand side of the line will form covalent bonds between themselves and also with other non-metals. This is because they all have a significant number of electrons in their outer shell, and therefore it is not favourable for them to lose them all. Just like with ionic bonds, we can draw out covalent bonds in several ways, and each of these ways of drawing out covalent bonds have their advantages and disadvantages. The first method is the one that we used over the page when drawing the covalent bond formed between two chlorine atoms, and this is a dot and cross diagram. On the left here you can see a full dot and cross diagram for ammonia or NH3. In this example, the electrons that originate from the nitrogen atom have been drawn as dots, and electrons originating from hydrogen atoms have been drawn as crosses. The black circles have been used to indicate outer electron shells. Each of the covalent bonds which formed between nitrogen and hydrogen is indicated by the overlap of these outer electron shells. And each overlap contains a pair of electrons, one originating from the nitrogen, shown as a dot, and one originating from the hydrogen, shown as a cross, clearly showing that the covalent bond is formed by the sharing of electrons. The final feature to note on this diagram is the pair of electrons that originate just from the nitrogen and are not bonded to any other atoms. These are what is known as a lone pair of electrons. We can simplify this dot and cross diagram by removing the outer electron shells, as is shown here on the right. 
All the other features remain and you can see that nitrogen has formed three covalent bonds to three hydrogen atoms, making a molecule of ammonia. We can look at another example of a dot and cross diagram here, which shows the molecule formed when two oxygen atoms form a covalent bond together. This is the O2 molecule. Again, the electrons from this oxygen atom have been drawn as dots and the electrons from this oxygen atom has been drawn as crosses, clearly showing that each oxygen atom originally had six electrons in its outer shell. In order to gain a full outer shell of electrons, each oxygen must share two electrons to get from six electrons to eight electrons. When two electrons are shared between two atoms, we call this a single covalent bond. And when four electrons are shared between two atoms, we call this a double bond, which is what exactly what we see in this example. You can figure out whether a single or double covalent bond is likely to form by considering how many more electrons are needed to get full outer shells. Again, on the right hand side, we've just redrawn this without the electron shells. It is also possible to have something called a triple covalent bond. And this is what you find in a molecule of nitrogen, or N2. In this case, each nitrogen atom had five electrons in its outer shell, so must share three in order to get a full eight. Sharing six electrons between two atoms results in a triple bond. So, now we've looked at dot and cross diagrams, we can think about another way in order to represent covalent bonds, which is displayed formulas. If you've seen our videos on ionic bonding, you'll already know the pros and cons of a dot and cross diagram. But if not, we'll revisit them here quickly. One of the good things about a dot cross diagram is it clearly shows where electrons have come from. And this is one of the clear benefits. For example, you can easily see that each oxygen atom has contributed two electrons to this double covalent bond. However, there are two downsides of dot and cross diagrams. And the first one is that they don't show true atom sizes. This is because they are normally drawn in an almost cartoon form to make it clear. They also don't give any idea of the arrangement of atoms in space. So dot and cross diagrams aren't going to be perfect representation for a covalent bond. Another variety of representation is the displayed formula, which you can see examples of here for ammonia and oxygen. Displayed formulas don't show where electrons come from, but they do show the arrangement of atoms in space. However, this arrangement is only 2D, not 3D. In a displayed formula, we simply draw a line wherever there's a covalent bond formed. And for a double bond, we just illustrate this with two lines, as shown here for this molecule of oxygen. The final way of drawing out a covalent molecule is to use something that's called a 3D model or a boron stick model. Rather than drawings, these are actual models that you can make. And the obvious benefit of these is that they show the molecule's 3D structure. However, these can be difficult to make and confusing for large molecules, so they're not so useful for these. Another point to note is that bonds are actually just forces and are not physical objects. Therefore, this representation is better than this representation, as this one incorrectly suggests that bonds are physical objects. This reasoning can also be applied as a disadvantage of a displayed formula. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing GCSE chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Stat Revised smiley face and together let's make GCSE chemistry a walk in the park.